Rigging for tight line steelhead is very straightforward. You tie about a two foot section of colored cider material to the end of a nine foot zero X leader, add a swivel to the end of the cider, and tie a fluorocarbon tippet to the swivel. Your tippet might be anywhere from two feet to five feet, depending on the depth. You can fish a single fly on the end of this or tandem flies where legal. Split shot can be placed above the flies or between them to get added depth. There are many ways to set up an indicator rig, but here Jeff Blood details exactly how he sets up his indicator rig. Show us how you rig an indicator for steelhead indicator rig and then show how to adjust it because um, I know myself included I get lazy and everybody gets lazy and you don't adjust your, your indicator height or your weight and then you're you're not bouncing bottom or you're not at the correct positioning. So uh, how do you start this so I'd, indicator I'd, rig? I'd, I'd be glad to show you how, Tom. Okay. And you know, that is probably one of the most important things is to adjust uh, <clears throat> for the conditions that you're standing over. Right. And as you move up and down the stream, it yeah. changes, yeah. okay? Yeah. Or from day to day, your yeah. weather system changes, you get more water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like to use a egg-shaped indicator. Um, for me, it just, Floats better, it's got good uh, aerodynamics for casting. Okay. And I like mine in line. Uh -huh. So what I mean by that is I'll show you as I put it on. So you're starting with a, just a nine foot three X <coughs> trout leader, right? Standard, standard nine leader. foot three X, nine or 10 feet. Okay. Uh, what I find is that seems just to be the optimum length mm -hmm. for at least Lake Erie steelhead fishing. Okay. And probably all of the Great Lakes mm -hmm. uh, from my experience. but. Anyway, uh, I just bend the line over, right? And I feed it through. Bend the, the leader over. The leader, I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. And and uh, feed it through. Right. And now you got a loop sticking through there, and okay. then you take your tag end. Yeah. And feed it through that loop, and okay. just pull the whole system all the way through. Uh -huh. And then you tighten down. Now okay. what that allows so you that to do is. So that doesn't slide. It locks if you notice, it's place. locked in, and mm -hmm. it's when I say in line, you can see how this it's. Um, proportioned all the way around so right. it's not a pendulum flopping around or whatever yep and I, I just find that works better especially in the wind okay now if I want to adjust that yeah um, you know I just back it off back off well I'm just pulling the... pulling the, the line through right. and then I just draw it down and now you can see I've moved that down a foot okay okay and, and I can opposite. move it all the way you down want to bring the it back up it's just, just right, I can so. move it all the way down the system okay now uh, Often what I do is I'll put a swivel right uh, where the tippet material starts on your leader. Okay. And the reason I do that, a couple of things. Um, in the fall of the year when all those leaves are in the system, yep. and you hook a leaf and the wind blows it and you get a helicopter effect and mm -hmm. it just twists your line. This makes it go away. The other side of it is when you're tying in your tippet material, it's a better junction, especially if it's fluorocarbon, and you have a nylon leader. Okay, so, so you start with a standard nylon leader sta and then fluorocarbon right. tippet. And fluorocarbon tippet. Okay. And that's what I fish So it's a straight three X off the swivel. Three X. Okay. And then I go to my, my fly and I use a tandem rig. Okay. And I use a uh, improved clinch to this fly. Okay. <clears throat> and so there's there's a system and okay. then so there's an egg fly mm -hmm. at the end of the tippet mm -hmm. and then below that you have what i have a white zonker yeah <clears throat> with how much tippet same and the well, same I 3x do, i do the same 3x okay because um, people are going to ask these questions do about you know, they want to know exactly two and a half what you got to three feet okay okay i know that's dropper. longer than what people would think it uh -huh. should be but that's yeah. What I've learned, it catches fish. Everybody wants to know why. I'm not really sure why. Uh -huh. It just catches more fish. Okay. okay. Enough for me. So <clears throat> on my split shot, yep. um, I carry three different size, B, BB, and 3 ot. Uh -huh. And what I find is I can, on almost every system, accomplish a lot. So this is a BB right here. Okay. And I'll put it about 14 inches above. Then I'll add two, three, four of those, or I'll put a three odd on. Now, why why are you doing that? And here's, here's How the How far, thing. that's about like eight inches from your... That's nine no, inches that's right there. So it's, ten, it's, ten, it's, it's, 10, it's about tw 12 inches from, right there. From you know, the I'll fly. vary it, you know, 
anywhere from 10 to 14 inches. Uh, <clears throat> now, probably the biggest mistake most people do is they break off. They continue to break off. And as they're doing that, let's just say you're losing both rigs, you're probably losing two or three inches every time you yeah. tie a fly. Right. And all of a sudden now they're down to seven feet or eight feet of, of tippet. Yep. I'm not going to tell you you can't catch fish with that, mm -hmm. but it really impacts it. So The you, more fine fluorocarbon you got in the water right. column, the less right. resistance and, and that against length, that There's tippet. something about that length mm -hmm. that just seems to be magical. So, you know, eventually cut it back out, put a new piece of tippet material in. Yeah. Tie two and flies on. Tie two flies on and get back to it. Yeah. Your split shot is, you know, you're measuring the variables, which are the depth, the speed of the water. Right. And um, so what you want to do is you want it to, like, bounce, but you don't want it to drop and hang up. Yeah. Okay. If you're not feeling the bottom, the likelihood that you're down on the bottom where the fish normally are is not very good. So if so, your bobber is your bobber, your strike indicator isn't twitching every once in a while, you're not deep enough. Well, the reality is it is a bobber. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we fly fishermen call it a strike indicator. I call it a bobber. And it's a, it, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's very effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so in my fishing, I also will um, high stick with my indicator on my line. Mm -hmm. People say you can't do it, and I say, why not? Okay, so often what I'm doing, and it has to do with your distance, you understand this. When you're high sticking, it's normally off the pendulum of the, your rod tip, maybe a little farther out, and you're letting it come down through. But if you have to cast 30 or 40 feet across the stream, yeah. it's very hard to high stick high and stick. be accurate yeah. over there to do it. This gives you that flexibility, uh -huh. so I can Flip it over there, you know, if it's in a place where it's, I can't wade into it to get there so to high stick. So you can mend and I can mend it and do it, and it just gives me more flexibility. So when do you when do you adjust your indicator? What what indications are there that oh I should make my indicator closer to the to the flies and the weight or farther away? So this is probably the least um, adjustment that I will do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But most of the time I'll go deeper. Okay. Uh, when uh, I'm not seeing the tick of the line, <clears throat> and I'll and I'll pull it all the way up close to the top, you know, within about two or three inches of the of the leader. Um, but there are times when I think the the water is really slow and the tail out of a pool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the the you cast it out if the leader's too long, your indicator's going, but it hasn't straightened your leader out yet so that you actually see the detection. So if you shorten it down, the detection will happen quicker, and especially when you're in a tail out, that's a good place to do it. So you're, you're going to probably adjust your weight before you adjust your indicator height? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So that's the first line of defense is the adding a split shot in, or in taking off a split shot if you're hanging up too much. If my length is correct, that's the first variable before okay. I even change my flies. Okay. Whether you use an indicator or tight line system, you will hook the bottom and you will lose a pile of flies. No way around it.